Rigsters here, back with episode two of revisiting and potentially relearning U Boat. On the first one, we denoted kind of, uh, whoa, this camera is a little strange. Kind of denoted a lot of different changes and interesting features that I did not recognize or see. And also to skip in the tutorial because, well, I want to try to figure this out myself. Let's go to the officer and show the files here. Let me do Franz Lambert based on this uh, engineering profile because engineers are always useful. Let me choose their next assignment. Status is boarded. Oh, I see. They have different skills here. What? Oh. Okay, let's see what skills are. Engine specialists. Or in chance of spawning. Jesus. But that's visible. Oh, okay. I see. So there's different uh, skills and abilities. And this one's Spanish speaker. Oh, I see. So you can have like multiple different skill points and specs you can do with the crew. So we have 17 out of 18 crew. Where? What squads? Oh, that's the uh, allow for tasks. Has like an order of priority. I see. Oh boy. <laughs> oh boy, I bit off more than I could chew with the crew management screen. Let's have uh, Norbit Goober board the boat and hit exit. Let's buy some supplies at this shop. Let's see what they changed the warehouse. So we've got. Okay, let's see here. So we have large caliper HE shells. Let's go to food. Food is always important. Uh, let's see here. We have canned bread, canned meat, we have preserved pork. Yeah, let's see if we get the bread and fill that up to the maximum because that's free. So might as well. It says standard food ration. And what else do we have here? We get some vegetables as well. Buy like 36 of it. And for ammunition for the deck gun. Or storage room, flak. Why would you want AP for flak? That's ridiculous. I'm not gonna pen anything with dinky 20 millimeter. So let's go to fuel and refill to the maximum. It costs two dollars a ton. I like how they changed the uh, cans to actually look different now. They actually have a graphic effect on it as well. Torpedoes, the most important thing of the boat. What? Um, holy moly, there's a lot of technical details here. So what's this T1PI1 mean? Let's see here. Standard issued steam with a P1 pistol. We are aware of some issues to design. The PS on the impact they see must hit at an angle close to 90 degrees. Launch torpedoes of magnets may explode on their own before they reach the target. So what's PIV2? Your vision has reliable impact zone setting that has works well on impact below 60 degrees, although it may occasionally trigger even at 84. Oh, so that's what they mean by the advanced simulation. And what this T2 PI1 is? Oh, okay. I see. So we should definitely get the PI V2s based on that information. Move that aboard. And what are these? TI zeros. Huh. Why why would these be free and these aren't? Let's see your G7E. Oh, it's a standard issued electric torpedo. Oh, okay. So let's go to items and see what's in here. Well not much different here. Seems pretty standard affair. Fuel is good. Ammunition. Hmm. I guess we could stack some AP ammo, move it into there, and buy 25 of those. So we're at $3,724. I know it's not really called dollars, but I'm just going to do that. Bear with me. <laughs> Med kit and replacement parts. How many replacement parts can I stack? Let's just stack the maximum for that. And hit exit. And hit goodbye. Now, what's this radio officer thing? 
Oh, I can request supply or play music. Okay, that's what that means. If I press, uh, roll out the mouse wheel here. New boat is off duty. Okay. Well, that's a recruiter, so I need a mission. Where is that mission giver? Required skipper. Oh, that's me. Okay. Oh, okay. So that's where I get my missions here. My crew needs to change. This is what's new in headquarters. Oh, wow. You can do all sorts of operations as well. Aerial reconnaissance, military stash. So this map has changed for the better. Equipment preparation. More potassium in the replacement parts. Improved toilets. Hmm. And accumulators. Oh, okay. Let's get an engineer for here. Uh, don't have anyone on land that matches the requirement. Oh, okay. So I need to get an engineer off station. So let's go to the crew management real quick here. And onboard. Wait, who's the engineer? Ah, okay. So we just onboard Alfred and have him get better toilets so they can poop better underwater. Because remember, when you're at the seas, you need to manage your poop really well. <laughs> okay. So we'll have him get better toilets for us while we're out at sea. Just so, you know, if you have a Taco Bell incident, it's not as unpleasant. That's pretty much what it sounds like to me. So if you click that quick menu to H HQ, let's get some better toilets. It'll take about 12 days, accept, and exit. All right, we'll improve the plumbing system of the boat. And then we go to the officer and hit any orders. What? New offensive. Hmm. These cargo ships ahead often travel in heavily armed escorts. Huh. That's you know, the defense starts major weak spot which we're going to hit. I call it the mid Atlantic gap. It's beyond the range of aircraft. Oh, okay. Oh, and this is where they start the wolf pack. Oh. Okay. So that's a campaign. Another campaign. Oh jeez. Scapa flow. Huh? Okay. Well, Enigma recovery. That sounds really hard. Uh, passage through Galbalter. Oh, that's a very deadly area to cross in a submarine. Um, so, what's this Enigma recover? Oh, you need a I see, so we're just sneak in. I see, so it says the difficulty at the top right here. And they need a diving suit to get the Enigma. That's a passage through here. Oh boy. Patrol BF1. That's like a more generic one, but you get a officer. Espionage. It's transport spy unharmed. It will make an additional order to help the spy. Hmm. Black Pit. Huh, okay. Okay, let's do that one, because that's a good training one to do. So I hit select here. Okay, travel 1,700, no, 1,070 nautical miles in the marked area. Sink trade ships with a total gross tonnage of 4,000 tons. So that's about like th two to three ships. So let's do, let's fast forward time by two days. That way the food and stuff is all ready. And then we'll press M key here. Uh, wow, this map has changed a lot. Maybe I should have done the tutorial. We'll head out to see, uh, where's the marked area? That here. Oh. Okay, so if I right-click on the map and do that, the boat will automatically plot a efficient course there. Perfect. Now, one of the things I do remember is you do want the engine guy on the engine's station with, with a crew member by pressing 1 here. And... 
the my guy on the deck here we need to be on the map so we don't get navigationally challenged and assign two sailors to that so we get 20% more fuel efficiency and I guess with the telegraph here you usually since we're on diesel boulders which is the default setting when you're above the water that's how they primarily traveled we want to go to forward two and then we'll start heading out to sea and speed it up a little bit by times 12 so we don't have to wait the whole time there you go. Just wanted to make sure this boat's not going to bonk into this harbor here. That would really suck. Let's find out if it actually does or not. Okay. So far, it is not. I have to get used to these new camera controls. They're a little bit strange. We go to M key here. Rudder. Right that here. Press the M key here. Oh, I see. So this is this speed up and slow down thing okay and this is your fatigue of course you can tell them to rest and what's the sonar radio guy no I don't need a resupply and then what should I do here Are we did zoom out with the mouse wheels in a little bit let's have some cook some food by right clicking on the storage room and open the storage room here Put the maximum amount of bread into there. Wax good. Ventilation. If we want to transfer that into there. In case you go underwater. That gun. If we want as much large caliber HE shells as possible. Gary's all good and hit exit. And then sign some crew members there. And speed up some time. We're pressing M. We get there a little bit quicker as well. I think he's... Oh, he's not really doing anything. Alright, well, you know what? That's okay. We still have that gun ammo there anyways, so... We'll center the view here. I like the new graphic effect they did for the submarine when you're zoomed out. That's pretty cool. So let's speed up the maximum and see what happens. A lot of new... Uh, Graphic interface to the map looks so much nicer from the old version. And over here you can see your battery capacity being charged. How much fuel you have. Based on current usage. Air quality. While we have fresh air, we're fine. Discipline. Reputation. 5 of 18. This has no effect. And budget. And it tells you how much you spent and all that neat stuff. That's pretty cool. So we're going at maximum speed here because, well, it's going to be a while until they do stuff. Let's center the view real quick here. And let's go to... Oh, we can compress time even faster. Let's go to 1,800 then. Let's make it go even faster. Let's go to maximum and see what happens. Oh, they're really... Wearing out, so let's uh, rest him and then rest the engineer and see how much fuel reserves we have 6,400. Okay, so we still have plenty of miles to go. Let's take a look here at 140 speed and open the storage room and see what happened here at the gallery. Oh, they didn't need too much food. That's good. And the deck gun is all good. That's good. <laughs> he can throw stuff overboard. That's new. And now you can see him look like hyperactive chipmunks scrubbing the deck to clean the boat. Make sure things are all good to go. Fuel is still good. Oh, I should rest the radio guy. Why is he still doing stuff and then let's see here it's assigned two sailors to reduce our fuel consumption I guess he automatically took over the maps while I was sleeping which is good I want to make sure they're well rested so let's speed up time again let's go to maximum 
Okay. Oh, they automatically sleep now. That's nice. I don't have to always hand manage the sleep cycle because that was probably the biggest complaint I had is you had to constantly manage their sleep. And that got old pretty quickly. Alright, let's slow down time a little bit to 140. And let's have him manage the radio. Oh. Uh, listening room. Wait. Yeah, listening on radio. Does he have anything new to say? No, he does not. Okay. Oh. Uh, wait. Let's speed up time just a little bit here. Do we have him? Um, wait. Let's go back to normal speed. Branch diesel engines. And let's click on the crew manager here. Let's get some more efficiency out of these engines so we have more fuel. It's always a good idea to have. And then let's rest these guys. Have him rest. Have myself on navigation and put two other guys there so he can get some rest. And let's continue forward. Speed up the time to maximum. Oh good, he did auto rest. What? Oh. Oh. I see. Oh. So they do auto rest. That's interesting. I didn't know you could auto rest them like that. Having four officers is a little bit trickier than having the full complement. Because they can't rotate as frequently. That's actually pretty cool. They'll auto rest when needed. I like that. That is such a neat, handy little feature. So let's get further along here. Oh, navigation accuracy. Uh oh. Oh, we need a navigator right now. So they warn you now. Whereas before, it would be like a total loss. Like you'd be totally lost beforehand in the old days. Love the little water effects too, as you can see right here. It's really nicely detailed. The modeling of this game is really good. If I can manipulate the camera a bit just to show you how video games can make stuff look so photorealistic these days. They've really... This is on medium-high settings as the preset. They've really done a good job with the aesthetics and modeling of the U-boat going up and down in the waves. And you zoom in here a little bit more details. They, they put in a lot of work. Like, even the... Uh, oops, I can get to zoom in more. Even this cook area, I mean, the graphic artists that had to do this kind of stuff had to put in a lot of time there. I want to see the storage room if they need to put more bread in there. Yes, we do. They need more bread. So, we got that there. And we'll speed up time again. Hopefully we get to the actual combat area. It would be nice to see. I don't know why they don't always uh, do that, but that's okay. As long as they automatically sleep, I'm not gonna like micro it that much. I'm not. There's some players will probably be like, "You need to micro," and I'm like, "Well, not in this case. If it's still working fine, I'll see if it really needs to be micro that much or that little. We'll find out." Okay, we're now finally in the combat zone, so it's. Hit patrol sector reached. So now we gained three hundred fifty dollars just by driving in the combat area, which is good. So let's uh, play it at normal speed here. So that's it for this part two of U boat. We finally got to the combat zone. I just was trying to make sure that the food and supplies weren't going ham or crazy. And I like the fact that they automated the sleep cycle because that was really annoying in the older version of this game where you had to constantly click on sleep and watch it like a hawk. Otherwise, it would mentally break and you'd just look at the screen going, you what, mate? So I also like that they added campaigns. 
they made the interface better for the most part. I haven't seen any oddities that made it too confusing. You no longer have to wait for the game to load various maps and sectors. Or if it is, I haven't even noticed it. So they did a really good job on the back end, making the game load much faster than it used to be. I used to have to wait like two to three minutes sometimes for some of these maps to update and cycle. And this was on a solid state drive, mind you. So I also run a Ko-Fi page where the goal is to get a better flight stick if you want to support the channel that way. And I hope you enjoyed this video of the second part of the first mission of U-Boat. This is Rickster's Journey, signing off.